AMD's X3D chips are... What are you doing, AMD? Also, budget motherboards really want them, and Intel is in so much trouble. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast and buckle in for the spicy hot takes that is Brett not being really okay with what AMD's doing with the X3D stuff. I hear the comments coming in now that I'm really negative, but it's only because I want AMD to do a little bit better. But they finally gave us the release dates of their upcoming X3D chips that everybody has been waiting for, as well as the price points. Something that they probably could have provided at CES, but chose not to for whatever reason. But they are finally here. You ready for it? Okay, we've got the 7950 X3D. It's gonna cost the same price as the 7950X. It's just free performance. It's it's free real estate coming in at 699. The 7900X3D is gonna be a $50 price bump to go up to 599. And the 7800X3D is gonna be a $50 price bump over the 7700X and is actually $20 more than the Ryzen 9 7900 that just launched. So it's gonna be a little mixed ground right there. Whether you want the 12 core 7900 or you want the eight core 7800X3D, whether you need the multi-core, you need the gaming, that's gonna be established there. So I hear you saying, oh Brett, those prices sound really good and really reasonable. You should be happy with that. And for the most part, I actually think that those prices are really good and reasonable. And it makes a lot of sense that AMD is making this happen. The price points have been a sticking issue for the 7000 series. And I really like where they're coming here. So that's my positive praise for that. AMD releasing all of this information in a YouTube video that they published over on their YouTube channel, which is succinct. Two minutes, 19 seconds, giving us all the details besides why they lied and why they are likely not going to deliver to the customers exactly what ex you're thinking they're going to. So if you remember back at CES, okay, not even a month ago, AMD released this slide saying that all three of these chips would be available in February of 2023. Now I, being a reasonable person, would not be upset if AMD said, hey, you know what? We ran into some unforeseen issues. We gotta delay these. It's not gonna be easy for us to ship these out at the timeline that we stated. So we're gonna have to slip it a little, okay? You're gonna have to wait a little while longer to get your hands on these amazing processors, which we promise are worth waiting for. That sounds like good, reasonable communication. Instead, what we got was AMD doing the bare minimum to meet that February target timeline for two of the chips coming out on February 28th of 2023. So the last possible day, and then the 7800X3D, the one that's gonna be most accessible to most people, that's not coming out until April 6th, over a month later. They're missing the timeline by a lot, and the video didn't disclose any reason why they're not gonna make that happen. And there's several theories that go in behind it. There have been leaked benchmarks coming out about these CPUs, and it turns out that there's no gaming performance to be had going from the 7800X3D to a Ryzen 9 X3D they're gonna give you the same gaming performance. And so likely most people wanna just buy the 7800X3D, but they're not gonna be able to at first for a full whole month. So the only ones you're gonna be able to grab onto are the more expensive ones. Additionally, one of the conspiracy theories that could go behind this is that Amy's not actually able to make these chips that quickly. The reason they're only launching the Ryzen 9 on the 28th of February is because they're simply gonna have not enough available. And the 5800X3D, the one they're gonna sell in the most volume, simply will not be ready. And just because they told us less than a month ago, everything was gonna be ready in February, it doesn't say certain models, it doesn't say some of them, it says available. That's what they're gonna be. This likely will be a paper launch. That, I hope I'm wrong. That's like, that's what I'm, expecting out of AMD here. They have not created a scenario where I trust their communication, where they've put themselves in a position where they get the benefit of the doubt from me. And I like the pricing. I hope the performance is good, but I think they're continuously just not being forward with their customers when they could easily do that. They could easily say, hey, we have to miss the timeline. And it would be so easy to be like, oh, that sucks, but I understand. 
that's all they have to do. And for whatever reasons, they're not doing that. And that might come into the fact that they just had their Q4 earnings report where they talked about, hey, they're doing really well. Their profitability is doing okay. There have been a few losses in different sectors, like in their PC client sales, dove 51% year on year. Gaming sales decreased by about 7%. And a lot of the money they had to write off was coming from their Xilinx acquisition that they did. But overall, AMD looking mighty healthy, while Intel being the competition, looking very unhealthy and taking a bath over in Q4 of last year. So AMD looking really good. But Dr. Lisa Su said something really intriguing during her Q4 talks, and that was the fact that they are under shipping chips to make sure that they are getting the right price out of what's happening because they can make more CPUs, they can make more GPUs, but if they did that, there would be too many out in the open market and then the prices would decline. So they are controlling the supply side of the supply and demand graph, saying we have been under shipping the sell through or consumption for the last two quarters. We under shipped in Q3, we under shipped in Q4, and we will under ship to a less lesser extent in Q1. So AMD really trying to make sure that they are going to get the prices that they want out of this, which is perfectly reasonable. That is what you expect a public facing company to do, to be able to keep the prices as high as they possibly can for the longest amount of time in order to deliver shareholder value. The problem that I have with this is not that AMD is doing this, it's that people continue to give AMD the benefit of the doubt that they refuse to give Intel and Nvidia. They treat Intel and Nvidia like they do only things wrong and they're just money grubbing companies when AMD is doing the same thing right before your eyes and you're giving them a pass simply because you want to, not because you're holding things to an equal standard. AMD is trying to bleed you dry just as much as every other company. That is their motive. They are publicly traded. They have to put their shareholders before you, their customer. So you just have to recognize that when they don't tell you that they're missing targets, it's because it would look bad to the shareholders. They would get in their minds, oh, you know the other CPU company that missed their mark? Intel, look what happened to them. They don't wanna be associated with that. It's perfectly reasonable to do that for a shareholder. It is bad customer relations. It is bad for you as a consumer for AMD to not be forthright with you. And it simply only beholdens their bottom line. And that's the frustration I have. Not the fact that they're doing it. It's just, it's not in our favor. But something negative for AMD, even more, they've been bundling their CPUs with a Star Wars Jedi Survivor. That, that's not coming out at the same date. It's getting delayed until April 28th. It was supposed to be coming out in March, but it's getting delayed. So that free game you got with AMD chips, you can't even play it as soon. But the thing that I am excited for when it comes to AMD is their cheaper motherboards for Ryzen 7000. We're getting some leaked details coming out of the A620 motherboards, which are gonna be the affordable ones. And it's honestly everything that you're just gonna need as an average consumer. 28 Gen 4 PCI Express lanes. You're gonna have eight Gen 3 PCI Express chipset lanes. You're gonna have no support for CPU overclocking, but support for RAM overclocking. And that just sounds perfect. Most people are not overclocking their Ryzen chips. Most people don't need Gen 5 PCI Express storage for their SSD or for their GPU because the GPUs don't even exist and the, C the SSDs are barely on the market. This is just like the perfect motherboard, which again, why would they release the low margin item when it's relevant and good for the consumer when they can hold off on it, force you to buy the B650 and X670 and make a little bit more money on it? Why hit that $125 price point as fast as possible, which they promised they're gonna do. They said that's what it starts at. They haven't even hit that yet. Well, as long as they get to it eventually, they keep their promise. And then people in the YouTube chat seem to be happy that, well, they eventually did what they said they were going to do, even though they could have done it a lot earlier and probably benefited you a little bit more. Speaking of benefiting you a little bit more, but also being a company making money, UFD Deals. Reese, what you got for us? Welcome back to UFD Deals. We bring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It's me, Reese. Brett can't handle another disappointment, so here I am. Me, Reese. 
live in the flesh. My microphone setup is working perfectly as usual. Don't look at my mouth movements. Anyway, on to the deals. First up is the Steel Series Apex 7 mechanical keyboard. If you know me, Reese, you know I like me some mechanical keyboards. It's the lowest price in 30 days, 45% off at $87.99. Next, there's the Corsair HS80 RGB wireless premium gaming headset so you can listen to my smooth buttery reese voice it's 27 percent off at 109.99 next up is this ryzen 7 5700x it's 209 dollars and there's a 30 dollar off promo code then there's the ryzen 7 5800x 3d going for 323 dollars that's 28 percent off finally the ryzen 7 7700x going for 348.99 with a 50 dollar off promo code that's it for the reese deals it's time to reese on out of here I'm Reese. Thank you, Reese. And you missed the Samsung Unpacked event because you were doing something else. I don't know. But then you popped into the stream and said, oh, no, did I miss it? Well, guess what? The Samsung Galaxy S23, 23 Plus and S23 Ultra have been announced. And they're essentially everything that we found out beforehand in the leaks. The biggest upgrades that are coming are going to be to the cameras. The S23 Ultra getting a 200 megapixel sensor. The S23 and 23 Plus are getting larger 12 megapixel selfie. They're going to have better video quality, better picture quality. That was the main focus of the phone side of things. Samsung also decreasing the curve on the S23 Ultra by about 30% to make it a little bit flatter and more usable in people's hands. They also had some announcements with regards to laptops and more gaming devices, including the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, which is going to have i5, i7 support, or was it i7, i9 support with graphics cards, RTX 4050, RTX 4070. They look really intriguing. The price point seems a little bit high. A couple of outlets have their hands on them, but you can pre-order the Galaxy phones right now if you want to. We have affiliate links in the video description if you were thinking of doing it anyways, where you can save up to $620, get a storage upgrade, up to $150 in instant Samsung credit and $350 instant trade credit. If you were considering upgrading anyways, using our affiliate links in the video description helps us out as a channel. But if you're not getting one, then don't even worry about it. But in case you also want to check out the Galaxy Book 3 360 or the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. We'll have links in the video description for that as well. But in case you're getting one of the S23, maybe steer clear of uh, everybody because everybody is having data breaches. But Google Fi warning their com their customers that they have had their data compromised. It's not the serious stuff like social security numbers, date of birth, addresses, all of that. But it's because the fact that they actually partner with Cellular and T-Mobile in order to get their MVNO support. And T-Mobile had a massive data breach previously where 37 million customers had their data exposed. And that's likely what Google Fi is telling people about. So data breaches everywhere. Now let's also talk about more negative things on Intel's side because I'm not just gonna harp on AMD. Intel doing some weird crappy things as well, including raising the price on their 12th gen CPUs and then lowering them again. There's being reports coming out that Intel is going to drop the price on their 12th gen chips after they've already raised them. This was a really bizarre thing that they did where they increased the price on the 12th gen to make it more expensive than the 13th gen. You can see right here, the initial price of the 12900K was $589. They recently boosted it to 648 and now it's getting a 20% price drop to be at 518. It looks like that 20% price drop is gonna apply all the way down the line, which is reasonable and what you would expect a company to do. And honestly, it's gonna create some really great budget setups with the i3-12100F coming in at 86 bucks. That's brilliant. That is that is a great price, especially since the 13100 isn't really much of an, an improvement. This makes a whole lot of sense. Why did they do it? But after they increased the price, after the 13th gen came out, and now the 20% is based, it's just, I don't understand it, but it's not the only price cut that's happening. Intel also price cutting their employees where they're cutting pay raises, they're cutting bonuses and decreasing the amount of money that's gonna be flowing through the company, especially for management that's saying that their level sevens and above are gonna be affected. And I'm learning for the first time, Intel has a 14 level employee structure 14 is the ceo and fresh graduates start at 13 and then it goes 
it's but level seven and above the higher end employees are the ones who are having their pay cuts, their bonuses reduced and making it so that they could potentially have more money to survive what is likely going to be several more brutal quarters of them getting outpaced by AMD in the data center section in a lot of the different client facing stuff, especially with the 13th gen. It doesn't look like it's going to be able to compete with the X3D. They launched the 13900 KS very shortly after the 13900K, and that just felt like a last ditch effort to make sure that they were the fastest. And as soon as AMD gets these X3D chips out, I don't see very many people going to Intel unless they're into production, content creation, etc. It looks like the 7800X3D is gonna be the de facto gaming CPU at 450 bucks in April, in April, not February, like we were told. And I told you that I, was gonna be upset with AMD. And I was. Goodbye.